2020 be the year of Queen Maxine? California Congresswoman Maxine Waters is a champion of the anti-Trump movement, Los Angeles rioters, and now this Sunday she's paying a visit to the Granite State, New Hampshire. That can only mean one thing, of course, given that it's a long way from her district. She's running for president. Certainly the inauguration is a way of welcoming in someone to the presidency and honoring them and respecting them. I don't honor him, I don't respect him, and I don't want to be involved with it. And so I'm questioning the patriotism of all of those Republicans who are allowing this president to side with Putin. I think that Jeff Sessions is very dangerous. I think he's a racist. This is a bunch of scumbags. That's what they are. are this is going to put us a little bit further on our way to what I've been calling for for so long, and that is impeachment. Larry Elder is a radio show host <laughs> in Los Angeles, a proud son of that city. He knows Maxine Waters, and he joins us now for a preview of her presidential campaign. Larry, it's great to see you. Why she, I, I mean, see you, too. Is it fair to assume if she's going to New Hampshire, all the way from Hancock Park, where she lives in L.A., that she's thinking about running for president? Well, if she runs, she may have a few problems. Uh, of the 535 lawmakers on D.C., uh, Tucker, she's the only one, to my knowledge, who's written a letter to Fidel Castro urging him not to send back a woman uh, who murdered a New Jersey state trooper, escaped, fled to Cuba. Congress passed a resolution urging Castro to return her. She wrote a letter to Castro. Uh, she's a, the, the woman who escaped is a former Black Panther. She likened her to a freedom fighter, accused her of being a victim of the criminal justice system and urged Castro not to return her to America. The woman, uh, Joanne Chesimar, remains uh, at the top of New Jersey's most wanted list mm. and Maxine Waters urged Castro not to send her back. That's point one. Second one is she falsely accused the CIA of basically fomenting the crack cocaine epidemic in the 80s yeah. and the 90s in the inner city. Uh, a argument that's been debunked by the Washington Post, the New York Times and the LA Times. And of course she had a meeting with uh, the then Secretary of Treasury urging him during the financial meltdown to bail out minority-owned banks without informing him that she and her husband had a financial interest in one of said minority banks, for which she was investigated by the House for ethics violation, played the race card. The uh, violation, therefore, went supernova. It is one of the reasons, Tucker, why one of the left-wing groups, uh, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics, constantly labels her as one of the most corrupt politicians on, in Washington, D.C. Well, I, you know, I can't speak to that because I'm not an investigator, but she's certainly good with money because she's been in office for 40 years, I think continuously, 40 years this year, and lives yet she lives in a four and a half million dollar house in one of the richest, one of the nicest neighborhoods Come on, in LA. She's a, she's, a shrewd, she's a shrewd stock investor. But how, did, how does she do that? Like, what, what's the, what, do you know the answer? It's, is it magic? I mean, how can I do something like that? I'll just give you the Harry Truman answer. When you go into politics, politics poor and you come out rich, you're stealing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Tucker, we haven't even talked that. about that. We haven't even talked about her left-wing views, and they're no different than Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren or Nancy Pelosi. But she champions herself, Maxine Waters does, as a champion of the inner city. So her, pol her policies for inner-city black and brown people are particularly corrosive. I know. One of which, of course, is her opposition to vouchers. I went to a high school in the inner city, Tucker, called Crenshaw. If you saw yeah. the movie Boys in the Hood, that's my high school. Right now, three percent of the kids at that school can do math at grade level. But if you live across the street, you are mandated to send your kid to that school. Republicans want to give that person across the street a choice to say, hell no. Democrats want that person to send their child to that school no matter what. That alone is a reason that people ought to reconsider uh, Maxine Waters uh, and black people in, in particular ought to reconsider their allegiance uh, to people like Maxine Waters I that totally, are doing a great deal I of totally damage agree. to the inner city. And if she runs for president, I hope you will be our Maxine Waters correspondent from L.A. She will, Larry, not, great to see she you will not get my vote. She won't get my vote. Yeah, but you can cover her for us. You'll be our man on the scene. I would love that. Thank you. Larry Elder. You got great it. Great to see you. Bennett's accusation that he was a victim of police brutality said the gun had been pulled on him and uh, that was excessive force. Yeah, this is uh, it's unfortunate. But let me start out the way I always do on these police-related incidents. And as you indicated, uh, as a former nearly four decades in law enforcement, retired not even a week. Uh, but I'm familiar with these. I've investigated them. I've had them happen with uh, people on, uh, that I send out every day, my sheriff's deputies. But I always start out these conversations by saying three things, and this is important. Number one, I was not there. Number two, I don't know all the facts. And number three, I caution people, let's not rush to judgment. Mm -hmm. 
And unlike a lot of people who are pining on this right now, I heard Colin Kaepernick say something. He was not there. He does not all the fact, know all the facts, and he rushed to judgment. Now, I'll say this about Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett was there, obviously, but he doesn't know all the facts. Now, Michael Bennett went out and did exactly what he's accusing these law enforcement officers of doing. He prejudged these two police officers with no facts and no evidence. Now, let me tell you what this is really about with Michael Bennett. His ego was bruised. Here's a guy, NFL football player. He's a hell of a defensive lineman. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to take any of that away from him. But he's used to having people fawn all over him, you know, and uh, with all the adulation and, oh, yeah, he's a big star. He's this, that, and the other. And he was humble that day. He was humble, unfortunately. But listen to his statement, and this is why I say what I do, because I don't have anything against Michael Bennett. I never met him. I wouldn't know him if he knocked on my door right now. I opened the door. I'd just see a big man. You know, so I didn't say black man, a big man. But listen to this statement. The officers ignoring my pleas, ignored my pleas, and instead told me to shut up and then took me to a nearby police car where I sat for what felt like an eternity until they apparently realized I was not a thug, common criminal, or an ordinary black man, but Michael Bennett, a famous professional football player that's his problem he knows this has nothing to do with race but his ego was bruised how the nerve of him saying i wasn't an ordinary black man what's wrong with ordinary black <laughs> you see the arrogance of this guy this is what his problem was but you know um uh, and i saw the tape and, and, and here's what i think about the tape all right the tape by itself larry is irrelevant it's meaningless this is just one piece of evidence it is a snippet of what will be a plethora of evidence, including witness statements, including more videotape. You know those casinos? They got they get every square inch of a casino is covered by video. So allow the law enforcement agency to do the investigation. They'll come out with a finding, and they'll take the appropriate action. But I caution uh, uh, listeners with this as well. The first facts are those most subject to change. And I think we all remember, hands up, don't shoot. Right. It was a lie. Uh, and, and, Chief, we also have an individual, Michael Bennett, who uh, has been protesting the national anthem, has talked about police brutality. So he's predisposed towards believing the worst possible thing when something happens. Oh, there's no doubt about that. He's got a political agenda, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't begrudge it. Even Colin Kaepernick, I don't begrudge it. I just say don't bring that stuff. Don't use the NFL a football field where I go to be entertained, I go to get away from politics, I go to get away from all this race-based politics, this identity politics, and all this not enjoy an afternoon, watch people, highly trained, skilled athletes perform on the football field. Now, after that, when he gets done, he wants to take a shower, if he wants to you know, you know, go on a, on a local TV station or show up at a food pantry. By the way, you'll never find these guys, including Colin Kaepernick. You'll never find them in the hood talking to young black men about some of the lifestyle choices that they're making, the flawed lifestyle choices. No, this is all about Colin Kaepernick. This is all about Michael Bennett. And I just, I just, they can do what they want, but I wish they wouldn't do that. And as long as they're going to enter into the political arena, then I'm going to slam them just like everybody else gets to be slammed in a political arena, including David Clark. My guest is Sheriff David Clark, former Sheriff David Clark, Milwaukee County. Uh, Sheriff, here's what Bennett said. It's a traumatic experience for me, uh, my family, and it sucks that the country that we live in now, sometimes you get profiled for the color of your skin, and um, it's a tough situation for me. Um, do I think every police officer is bad? No, I don't believe that. Do I believe there's some people out there that judge people on the color of their skin? I do believe that, and um, I'm just focused on um, trying to push forward and keep keep continuously championing the quest for um, justice for people, um, keep pushing uh, equality for oppressed people. And um, that's, that's just what the, that's what I'm about and what I keep doing. Sheriff. You know, these guys, <laughs> and God bless Michael Ben. I'm not saying he's a bad guy, but you know what? The guy's a buffoon because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He starts talking about oppressed people. What oppressed people and how are they oppressed? How much money has he given? From his rightly earned salary, how much is he given to, to uh, food pantries? How much is he given to school choice programs? 
How much has he given to scholarships for uh, young, impoverished people to, to go to better schools, on and on and on? We never hear from Michael Bennett about these issues, but now he wants to talk about oppression. He, he's the furthest thing from it right now. And God, excuse me, God bless him. He can say what he wants, but again, if you're going to get into the political arena and you're going to spar with me, you better come ready. And you know what? He's not ready for what I'm going to throw at him because I just challenged him with some things, and he's not hearing this now, but he will, no doubt. And I want a response from him. I will say, Michael, what are you doing to improve the lives of other people? Tell me what you're doing. All you're doing is spewing talking points. What relevance is it that the two officers involved are Hispanic? The undersheriff, uh, Kevin McMahill, uh, made a big deal out of that. Uh, what's, your, what's your take on why he said that? Well, it's, it's, I know what he was trying to get at, um, and, and I don't have a problem with it, but I think it's irrelevant. I, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I gathered that from watching the video, but you know what? I didn't even bring it out. But Michael Bennett prejudged these guys. Michael Bennett, Bennett said, uh, do I think uh, all police officers are bad? No, but do I believe that some people, uh, police officers, target people because of the color of their skin? Yes. Well, he targeted those two police officers because of the color of their skin. Mm-hmm. This is that identity politics that he knows little about, but he's heard about, and so he's dabbing in it. But the, the problem is when you're not fully informed of what you're talking about, you're going to sound stupid. I don't care if those uh, officers were Hispanic. I don't care if they were, were white. I don't care if they were black. If those were two black officers, I'll tell you right now, Bennett would have had the same problem because he felt humble that day. This big star, remember what he said in his statement, I'm no ordinary black man. I am Michael Bennett.